so you have four uh, basic generalized alternatives here, and you know we can. I uh, got Leviathan, Behemoth, Mao, and then you got Climate X. Climate X mm-hmm. is this, at least in my opinion, is something that I would like to have, um, and I think something that that I think you seem to advocate for in some yeah, way as well. Definitely. So let's so let's just describe that real quick and and sort of give an idea of what the more positive potential future could be regarding the research that you've done. Great. So uh, it's hard to define X. Uh, that's why the last section of the book explores it in some detail. But if I had to begin by putting it formulaically, the the future that we describe, or the path into a future that we describe as climate X, is a scenario where somehow we have managed to overcome the capitalist organization of the global economy, while also avoiding the creation of a planetary sovereignty mm. and therefore have managed to while in, in indeed also while overcoming the uh, the contemporary form of sovereignty which is organized on uh, to put it bluntly a, a radically non-democratic basis so that's a very tall order and I think the easiest way to understand it is it is a utopian vision and so as soon as I say well it's utopian then one might reasonably ask, then what's what's the point? I mean, I, don't we need something concrete? And our, our response to that would be to say that climate change is particularly complicated as politics because it presents itself as a crisis of the imagination. And that even on the political left, we see a deep crisis of the inability to imagine how to confront climate change except for... In, accepting something like what we describe as climate leviathan, a capitalist world order that at least has some powerful adults at the top trying to avoid some of the worst out possible outcomes. Mm-hmm. And so the problem is, as long as we're stuck within a political horizon where that's the best we can imagine, then we really are in trouble. And we need to, in, as a first step towards radically working our way out of this difficult situation, to develop a much clearer critical perspective uh, where we stand in terms of the Earth's natural history, in terms of human political history, as a way of sketching a new imaginary or, or a new utopian prospect mm-hmm. for a radically different organization of power in the world. Right, and and so that um, <laughs> oh, go on. Sorry, that was a that was a preface, but now I didn't answer your question. Of what is X? Yeah. So, <laughs> what does that really mean? I mean, what we're talking about is what we would. And this is clearly this is not, this is not really our idea in any sense. It's it's an idea which already is playing itself out all over the world in many people's lives, and we would never dare to try and take credit for it. But it's the idea of trying to say, okay, well, if we need to confront capitalism in order to deal with climate change, and if the the way to do that is to start with where you are, then what we're describing is an effort at building upon the imminent social and ecological struggles that are already happening all over the world, mainly led by poor people and women and people of color and indigenous people and working people and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's about trying to radicalize and unite all those disparate struggles so that they could become something like the beginning of a very different way of organizing the world. So that's concretely what we're talking about. In that sense, I suppose someone could, could, legitimately criticize our book as saying it's just a really long-winded way of celebrating some of the most <laughs> radical stuff that's happening in the world. Right. But I think Jeff and I would actually be quite flattered with that description because um, we do want to celebrate the great things that are happening in the world. But at the same time, we, we think we also have something important to contribute, which is a very honest, analytical, theoretically grounded, historically you know, aware perspective on just how great the challenge is and how 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 far we have to go and right. so our 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 effort to contribute to that struggle goes beyond our own political involvement but into uh this kind this kind of work that involves uh thinking and writing and teaching about questions that we all need to attend to like where are we what are we really trying to fight for that's right. a that's a bit long-winded let me put it to you really bluntly we and I'll put it more negatively if i could when we've been involved in climate justice work, we have often felt that if we're really honest, a lot of what people think they're struggling for and what they're actually likely to achieve are so far apart that we need to have a clear understanding of 
what we're really trying to do. And that's what we want right. to contribute to. Yeah, of course. Because we don't want to accidentally find out that through some kind of ruse of history, we've all been fighting to build climate leviathan when what we really wanted was climate X. Thank you.